Hi, my name is Rose. I'm a third year undergraduate studying law at St John's. I chose to apply to Oxford University um, firstly because it's one of the best institutions not only in the country but in the world and I really wanted to come to a place where I knew that I would get the best teaching from some of the experts in their field, um, especially for law when I know that my professors are the ones writing the books and delivering the lecture series, I find that really helpful. Um, I also chose Oxford because although originally I'm from Leeds I quite wanted to move away from home and get that sense of independence but still in a collegiate system where you feel like you have a family away from home. When I was thinking of applying to Oxford I decided that I would first look at all the prospectus material that was on offer and then I also looked at the specific websites for certain colleges to help narrow down my choice. I also attended an open day so I could have a look at different colleges, get a feel of what each of the colleges was offering um, and St John's I think stood out to me uh, like mainly because they also, as well as providing the official material, also have unofficial material that you get from students like SJC TV where they're willing to give you an inside look into what life is at St John's and I found that really appealing and it really helped to narrow down my decision. Um, I attended a comprehensive school um, on the outskirts of Leeds and generally there's a few pupils who might apply for Oxford and Cambridge every year. We do receive a lot of help in our application process because we're quite lucky that our sixth form tutor did attend Oxford um, but majoritively we'll maybe get a few people in Oxbridge w every year but it's not, a, it's not a great amount but we're always encouraged to try if we think that that's what we want. I think one of the main differences between learning at Oxford and learning at school is especially with humanities subjects they're very self-taught and you have to be very self-disciplined in the way that you approach work you decide what you want to read even though your tutors will help by giving you a core reading list for a direction as to what they think you should be reading it's very much your decision when you read what lectures you attend what seminars you might go to and what other things you might want to look into. The social life here at St John's is incredible. We have the bar, we have bops every two weeks which are basically just small parties that are held in college where JCR members or MCR members will get together um, and just sh share a few drinks, have a dance with resident DJs that they'll recruit from college. On a university-wide level there are hundreds of societies so whatever your hobbies are, whether that's arts or sports or drama or music or journalism, wh whatever your hobby is, you will find a society for it, whether that's Doctor Who or I don't know, pizza, appreciation, there tends to be a society for anything you might want to do. I think the work-life balance is something which, necess which necessarily when you first come to Oxford you don't appreciate how you're going to be able to fit everything in and how you think that you're going to be able to make friends and fit in extracurricular activities but I think after your first few weeks it's something that's very easy to fit into place and you'll realise there's a time for work and there's a time for going out and having fun. Um, I personally when I first came thought that 60 hours reading a week was something that I'd never be able to do and still have a life but I've learned with all the societies that I'm in and all the friends I've made and all the nights that I go out on that it's definitely possible to have a work-life balance. I, mean, I spend my days in the library but then I spend my nights in the bar going out with friends doing society things and it's very possible to have a good work-life balance it's not all the hard work and none of the fun that people think Oxford's going to be. The, the main way of teaching at Oxford tends to be tutorials so these will be groups of um, anywhere between two to four people um, with their tutor discussing their essay or their problem sheet that they've been do for the work they've been set during the week. One of us will read our essay, the other one will critique it, which isn't as scary as it sounds at all. And the tutors are there to support you and be helpful and they'll give you constructive criticism and then you'll have a discussion about the topic more broadly. And I think the tutorial system has been incredible for my personal development, but also I think it's a really good teaching mechanism that is unique to Oxford. St John's especially is very supportive, it sometimes will hold um, welfare lunches or dinners where we'll get the opportunity to discuss our problems with, with the help of a free lunch every so often. Um, they also provide um, book grants and travel grants to help you if you need to go on a special trip for your course or if you need to buy specific books that they don't necessarily have in the library or that you just quite want a personal copy of, they'll be able to help you afford that. There's also bursaries that are available on a university wide level. So so it does, Oxford does provide well for its students in, in this sense of support money-wise, so it's not especially an expensive place to come.
Some people think that there are certain types of people that you'll get in Oxford, certain stereotypes, but I've definitely found that this isn't true at all, especially at St John's. There is such a wide range of people with completely different backgrounds, completely different interests, and everybody that you meet never lives up to any stereotype which you might have anticipated coming coming to Oxford and not even just in St John's, the university wide, nobody that I've met has matched any stereotypes that supposedly Oxford students have. It is a family and all of the second and third years are there to help you in your first year. It's not as big and scary as you think it's going to be. We are all really quite a close family at John's even though we're one of the bigger colleges and it, yeah, it just didn't live up to my expectations but it has exceeded them and I'm really close to like, everybody that I know here. It sounds really twee and awful and when this goes up my friends are going to be like, oh my god. But, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> Anybody can apply here and everybody, if that's what they want, they should apply here. There's no reason to stop you applying to Oxford. You meet so many different types of people and it's just a really good opportunity and if you want to seize that then you should. So look at every prospectus you can, every college website you can and if you can, talk to people who've been to Oxford or if you don't know anybody, get in contact with the college, they can provide you with a lot of information that you might not necessarily think is out there. Um, I would also research the course. One of the main reasons I chose Oxford was because my course is so specific and they don't teach modules at other universities that I knew I wanted to do here. So just make sure that you're well informed about the choice you're making. But if you want to apply, I suggest you do. It's like one of the best things I've ever done and I would definitely tell everybody to go for it.